So our next talk is about depth sensitivity investigation on multi-view glasses free 3D displays, of which there are not enough around these days. Um, this is from uh, Dr. Di Zhang, uh, CU China. Uh, unfortunately, uh, she wasn't able to get a, a visa to enter America, so we have a, a video talk instead. Hi everybody, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to present my work here uh, for you uh, in this conference. First of all, I, I will thanks I will show my thanks to the Miss uh, Anne McCarthy. She organized this uh, pre-recorded video for me, and also show my thanks to the chair of the conference, Professor Hillman. He accepted my request to do this video video presentation because I cannot go to America. Uh, thanks again. My name is Di Zhang. I'm from Communication University of China in Beijing. I'm a junior lecturer, and um, my research is uh, my research is about 3D display technology and human vision perception. Um, today I'm going to share with you one of my projects about depth sensitivity investigation on multi-view glass free 3D display. How I come out with this idea is uh, people are trying to develop to, to develop 3D display with small views because small views uh, means we are closer to the reality because in, in, in real world they see the infinite view numbers of the object. And uh, also, a 3D display uh, is now using misused in some vision screening because it's a kind of a new technology, and this some digital instrument is used for vision measurement. Uh, uh, so we need to uh, evaluate the effect of this new technology and whether multi view you really improve the performance of this uh, depth perception. And the second aspect is uh, about human contents. Um, if, when people do the vision test, normally they have many various types of optimal content. Uh, for example, this one, this one, it, it is uh, based on the monocular cue and the binocular cue. So people will see the contour of the object and this one, the uh, contour of the object is embedded in the random dot diagram, so it's only uh, use uh, use only binocular, uh, binocular cube. So this different type of uh, stimuli or will have different performance, and it will stimulate different mechanisms. So, um, but uh, this kind of uh, test is um, tested on different platform with different mechanism. So it is interesting to know if we provide one standard 3D, such as a multi-view 3D display with one platform, we display these two types of uh, stimuli content. We will compare these two types of uh, content and uh, compare the performance. Uh, so this is a second object. And uh, in this experiment, I I use the depth to I use depth sensitivity to evaluate people's performance. Mm. Uh, there are two objects I want to know is the uh, the depth sensitivity for two views equals to multi view. Uh, most of us will say no, right? Because we we know that. Um, Multi-view will, will bring more information. Uh, it is more comfortable to, for people to see this multi-view. The second object is uh, to know how to know content affects uh, the depth performance. In this experiment, I use uh, uh, one instrument. The main instrument is a. Uh, uh, Glasses free display. Uh, it is a 50 inch TV with a resolution of this. And uh, it is a glass free display because we uh, put an articular sheet in front of the screen. And um, there are two modes for this display one is two view, two 
view mode, and another is 28 view mode. It is changeable, and uh, it is uh, mm, uh, it is cl uh, controlled by the algorithm. So this is the instrument I use, and uh, for the subject, the people are from the university. The University of, of Beijing of Post and Telecommunications. They are master or undergraduate students, so the average age of the subject is uh, around uh, 22. And um, before they participate the experiment, we check we check their vision. The vision criteria there are two two type of two vision criteria. One is the monocular vision accuracy of the subject should be equal or better than 10 by 10, and uh, no history of the ocular pathology and the strabism. So this is a subject, and uh, here's the protocol. Before we do the experiment, we need to make stimuli create, we need to create stimulus. So there are two types of uh, Stimulus. One is a contour stereogram. A contour stereogram is this one. The object with the obvious contour. This is the this is right eye image and this is a left eye image. One of out of the four objects will be sh will be shifted horizontally. For example, this one, the second one is shifted horizontally. So when we represent, when we present it in the star on the 3D display, people will see this one maybe out of or in front of or behind of this the other three, this the other three object. Another, the second stimuli is random dot diagram. Is this one? It, this there is a, a E embedded in this stereogram. When this is a right eye image, this is a left eye image. We see nothing with with this this kind of display. But if we display on the 3D display, we'll see there's an E in the center. And uh, the protocol. So the whole experiment there are five sections and we measure depth sensitivity in, for each section. The first session, we, we use two-wheel display mode, and we display random dot stereogram on the display, on the screen. And the people, the subject, I asked to, to see if they can see one of these objects uh, have this uh, depth information. They have to choose. The depth information have uh, eight levels, eight levels from 30 second to 1,200 second. This is a disparity, and uh, for this is session one and session two, we have 28 views, and the random dot diagram are displayed. And uh, in session three, there are two view display mode and the uh, contour stereogram is displayed and in four, session 4, 28 view display mode and contour stereogram displayed. Uh, in, the four, in the fifth session, we use the printed paper booklet with red and blue glasses to test the people's subject's vision because it, in conventionally, um, in China, we use this kind of uh, test to, to, to evaluate their stereo accuracy. So we, we add this as a reference. All the order of the sessions is uh, randomized. People don't, uh, subjects don't use the same order. So the effect of the order of the sessions is removed. Here's the result. <clears throat> This, this this number is the average depth sensitivity across all subjects for each session. This first first row, first row this is two view and uh, twenty eight view, and this is reference uh, the book light test. And then in the second this this two views we have a uh, contour stereogram and a random dot diagram, and also for twenty eight views 
we have contour, squat diagram, and random dot diagram. And this is the uh, average uh, disparity they could uh, they could perceive. The minimum disparity they could perceive, and this average. And this is uh, the standard for the standard step deviation, standard deviation. We can see that the best perform appears here. This one is 28 views with random dot diagram, and uh, the lowest depth sensitivity appears here is 2 view with contour diagram. Here is uh, the figure for the percentage of correct answers for each type of, of disparity level. Uh, so the horizontal axis is the disparity level from 30 seconds to 1,200 uh, seconds, and the vertical axis is the percentage of correct answer. Uh, so the best, uh, when the disparity level is 30, the lowest correct answer appears here. This 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 green line, this green line is a contour diagram with two views. And the best perform appear here. It is the random dot diagram with 28 views. But with uh, this uh, disparity level uh, increase, the performance uh, becomes closer. So here is the figure. And uh, now let's discuss about the uh, the result. There are two types. Uh, there are two questions to discuss. One is why high depth sensitivity with more views? Uh, in my paper, I, I explain four aspects. One is the motion parallax, because um, when people, in, although people are resta restrict with the head side, but they don't move their head, but the, the eyes movement may be unconscious, so they also uh, there's still motion parallax effect. So, and the second is a variation of intensity between views. Because with small views, the fluctuation of the light intensity becomes smoother. So, the, the weaving performance, the comfortable level may be better with small views. And also the crosstalk. As we all know, the crosstalk between adjacent views are uh, uh, very large. But with more with this, for example, the view one and the view eight, their crosstalk uh, are, are very low. So um, when people see this uh, uh, screen, maybe their one of their eyes is in view one and another is view is with view eight. So the crosstalk between the eyes is very low. So this will also increase this uh, comfortable level. And uh, the last is a uh, maximum display clear depth of the multi-view display. It means um, with more uh, views, with more aspect, our eyes, our brain can perceive this object better. And the fact, the difference between contour diagram and the random dot diagram. Mm, this is both stimuli. One explain is the binocular and the monocular cube. For the Contour diagram, there are uh, effect. Maybe they have two effect, both monocular and uh, uh, binocular cube. For random dot diagram, they're only binocular cube, and the monocular cube it will affect their performance. So the performance for contour diagram are not as well as random dot diagram. And the second is the stimuli size. This. We also uh, include the performance of uh, people with uh, random dot diagram because random dot diagram uh, they have larger stimulus size than contour diagram because uh, they only have contour and the random dot diagram they have a background with disparity. And uh, the last one is interference between views because uh, this is due to my design of the experiment maybe mm, because I this contour diagram it is. A uh, black line on a white background. So the black line on the web, white background, when there is crosstalk between views, this interference is very obvious. So this will also affect people's performance. 
So here comes uh, the conclusion. Uh, the conclusion of the paper is uh, for small views lead to hair sensitivity. Maybe this is a common knowledge for, for people doing this research, but there's one, um, one question we need to think about is, uh, is it really impossible, uh, really necessary to increase the view numbers um, without considering it is worthwhile or not, because people may have good performance with 28 views they may also have good performance with um, 14, 14 views or 10 views. And it may be their performance between 10 views and 28 views are not very different. So we don't need to make too many views to achieve the good performance. So this is one question we need to think about. What is optimum view number for people to perceive this type of information? And the second is a similar fact vision perception. This is also ob uh, obvious, um, this is also general in, in knowledge for, for people doing vision research, but we need to test uh, different stimuli contents on the same platform. This, this will reduce the effect of the, con of the instrument. So here is uh, three, three aspects. Uh, uh, we can use for, for this research, but it's a clinical measurement and treatment. It will bring some reference to clinical people or risk, uh, for, for, the, for them to choose the digital technology for screen, for vision screening. And it will also pre, uh, bring some ideas uh, for vision research. People are doing vision research. When they choose the student content, they need to think about uh, the effect of different similar content. And uh, last, it will also help people with 3D display technology when they choose how many view numbers they, they need to have. We need to think about um, Many how, how how many view numbers will affect their performance to to which kind of a level. So this is all my presentation. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions or on, on any discussions you want to have with me, please contact me with this uh, this email. Thanks again.